Welcome to part two of the STCC Libraries course on APA Citations, seventh edition. In this video, we will be discussing bibliographic citation and the APA references page. To learn about quoting, paraphrasing, and in-text citation, please view part one. A bibliography is a list of sources referred to within a work. In APA style, the bibliography is called a references page. On this page, you will list all of the sources you used to write your own paper. Before we get into the details of citing sources, first, review these guidelines on page formatting. These formatting rules apply not only to your references page, but to your whole paper. First, your paper should have one inch margins. Usually, one inch is the default setting, so you shouldn't have to worry if you're using MS Word or Google Docs. Next, you need to use a readable font. Some examples are Times New Roman 12 point, Georgia 11 point, Calibri 11 point, or Arial 11 point. I highly recommend that you use Times New Roman. It's a very standard font and it is very easy to read. Finally, your entire paper should be double spaced. This includes the title page and the references page, as well as the entire body of your paper. Again, an APA bibliography is called References. The word References, with a capital R, should be in bold and centered at the top of your page. Do not put it in quotation marks or underline it. Once you've written references at the top, press the enter or return key on your keyboard once. Change the alignment to left justified and turn off the bold setting. Then begin listing your references. You will list your sources in alphabetical order by the author's last name. If an article has multiple authors, use the first author listed and keep the original order of the article. Only the overall list of references should be alphabetized. Use the author's last name, comma, first initial, period, second initial, period. For example, Smith, comma, C, period, M period. It is very likely that many of your sources will have more than one author. When a source has two authors, use the AND symbol, called the ampersand, between the names. For example, Smith, comma, C, period, M, period, ampersand, White, comma, J, period. When a source has three or more authors, use commas between each name and the ampersand before the last name. For example, Smith, comma, C, period, M, period, comma, White, comma, J, period, comma, ampersand, Doe, comma, R, period, R, period. Put the titles of books and journals in italics and use title case. This means you should capitalize all words except for small ones like and, of, or, the. Do not use any special formatting for the titles of chapters or articles. This means no underlines, italics, or quotation marks. Use sentence case. This means only the first word of the title should be capitalized. The two exceptions are for proper nouns, like state names, and the first word after a colon. Take the following example. Clinical approach to the older patient, colon, an overview. The word clinical is capitalized because it is the first word of the title. The word an is capitalized 
because it is the first word of the subtitle. Other information will be required for each citation. This information will change depending on the type of source, but common examples are the publication date and the page numbers. Let's look at some citation examples. The first is an example of a journal article citation. Notice a few things. First, the author in this case has a hyphenated last name, so you can see an example of how to list that type of name. Next, after the authors comes the date in parentheses, followed by a period. The following piece of information is the title of the article, Nursing Students with Physical Disabilities, Dispelling Myths and Correcting Misconceptions. Notice a few things here. There is a title and a subtitle. It is all in sentence case. Nursing is capitalized, as well as dispelling but no other words are capitalized. The next piece of information is the title of the journal, Nurse Educator. The journal title is in title case, which means both words are capitalized. It is also in italics, followed by a comma, and the set of numbers after that is the volume, 41, and the issue number, 1. Notice here that the italics continues to the volume number, 41. It then stops, and the issue number is in parentheses. Next is a comma, and the page numbers, 13 through 18. Notice that you do not have to put a P here. Then a period at the end. The next piece of information is called a DOI, which stands for Digital Object Identifier. Most articles nowadays have a DOI, and if you're using the library databases, you'll be able to find the DOI in this link format. That's the last piece of information you'll include in the citation. However, if there is no DOI given, you do not need to list an URL or any DOI number. You can end the citation after the page number with a period. The second example is a citation for the article that we use to practice quoting and paraphrasing in part one. The authors, Sarit and Besser, are listed, followed by the date in parentheses. Next is the title of the article, Levels of Emotional Intelligence of Nursing Students. Notice that it is in sentence case, which means only levels is capitalized. The next piece of information, International Journal of Caring Sciences, is italicized. This is the title of the journal. It is in title case, which means all the words are capitalized except for of. Follow this with a comma, the volume number, which is still in italics, and then the issue number in parentheses, not italicized, followed by another comma and the page range, end with a period. This is an example of where there is no DOI given. You do not need to include a URL. You can end the citation at the page number. Here are some examples of how to cite web articles. Again, you will always start with the author. In the first example, the author is K. Gaines. In parentheses, we have the date of publication. Typically, you'd like to use more than just the year. Your reader should know the most recent version that you were able to view and the exact date. Next is the title of the web page. It should be in italics. The example here is this is how COVID-19 is changing the future of nursing for students and tenured nurses, period. The name of the website, Nurse, does not have any special formatting. Next, include the URL to the actual article. The second example is a web article 
that was not written by an individual person, but rather by an institution, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Because this institution is the author and sponsor of the article, you can list Centers for Disease Control and Prevention where the author's name would go, followed by a period. Next is the date in parentheses, period, then the title of the web page, Gestational Diabetes in Italics. Lastly, include the URL to the web page. If the author and the name of the website are the same, in this case, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, you do not need to include the name of the website. You can just use the institution as the author. Lastly, this is an example of how to cite a book. The example here is actually the STCC student nursing textbook. Always start with the authors, include the date of publication, the title, and the last piece of information is the publisher. You can usually find the publisher on the spine of the book or on the title page. Citation can be intimidating. It's very important to remember that you will never be asked to memorize any of this information. The STCC Library website has many resources to help you with APA style. The STCC Nursing Research Guide includes a page about APA style with links to helpful resources as well as short videos about how to create hanging indents. It also links to an excellent citation generator called MyBib. MyBib is completely free, it has no ads, and you do not need to create an account to use it. Just remember that citation generators are like calculators. If you don't put the correct information into the generator, you will not get a correct citation out of it. It's best to familiarize yourself with the rules of APA style so that you can recognize when a citation is incorrect. If you have questions about citation or about finding resources for your work, please contact the STCC library by email or you can use the chat feature on our website. We look forward to working with you.